Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and in this episode I'm going to show you guys what I am doing following a brand new fresh installation and a clean wipe of Windows. So stick around. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining us on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future releases that come down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below. All right, guys, so the primary focus today is actually going to be more on add-ons linker. So as I said in the beginning of the video, I did a fresh install of everything. My computer is completely cleaned. Um, I actually had a hard drive failure over the weekend and had to completely wipe and start again. Um, so I figured this was a good time to sort of do a rehash of some of the steps that I take. A lot of people are always asking still to this day how to use add-ons linker and things like that, which is totally fine. So I wanted to show you guys sort of what I do. So I've already downloaded everything, you guys. I'll have a link to add-ons linker down in the description below if you guys are interested in checking that out. But I'm going to walk you guys through all of my steps step by step. So the first thing that I'm doing here is I'm, I recommend 7-Zip, but whatever extractor that you guys use, I'm using 7-Zip here. And I'm going to extract MSFS add-ons linker. Now, I'm not going to open this or execute it until I move it. Here is the add-ons linker. I am going to move it to a separate folder. I like to keep my stuff very, very structured when it comes to Microsoft Flight Simulator because I do so many reviews and add-ons and things that I'm always checking out. So I have a drive specifically for it. I have a folder specifically for that. And you can see add-ons that I've already created that folder there and applications. So I'm going to move this to the applications folder. And then from here, I will execute the EXE. And for the first time that I run it, I'm going to run it as an administrator to make sure it has all necessary permissions that it needs to do what it needs to do. Now it is launching, it shows it's starting, and then it brings us to the configuration window. So from the configuration window here, the first thing that I'm going to do is find my add-ons folder. So again, I'm going to go back to that same directory, and there's my add-ons folder. And you can see there's already some stuff in there, but we haven't actually installed it yet. I never put anything into the community folder without using add-ons linker because I want the ability to be able to remove it quickly. And things that install automatically into the community folder, I'm going to show you guys how to move. It's actually very simple. It's just a matter of moving it. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK here. There it is. MSFS community folder. Now this is where during the installation you want to make sure that you never use the default because it makes it a lot easier to get to it. I always create my own packages folder and then I point the when I do the first Microsoft Flight Simulator installation. So you launch the installation for the first time. It gives you that update screen and it gives you like a C user app data local roaming blah blah blah. That is a pain in the ass to get to that folder. And so what I do is I create this packages folder wherever you want, but create a folder called packages. And then I point the updater to this and it will create the community and official folder. So there it is. There's a community folder. Um, there's a few other settings that you can do, but I'm not really making this a necessary tutorial, more of a structure of how I do things and keep it simple. All right. So <clears throat> it's quite a bit of work the first time you do this. Simply because of the fact that, uh, you know, there's so much that you have to organize. But we're going to go ahead and hit OK here. And of course, my add-ons linker launched on a different monitor because this currently isn't my primary display. So let me bring it over. There we go. And there's add-ons linker. Now you can see there's already this stuff here. Now if you trigger it like this, it automatically adds it. I'm not ready to trigger that yet. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to come into the add-ons directory. So now we're going to come back over to this one here. Go to this PC, go to my games and apps drive, Microsoft Flight Simulator, add-ons, and now we're going to create some new folders. 
So the first one we want, obviously, is aircraft. And if you want, you can break it down even further. You can go general aviation, airliners. I typically just do aircraft. And then I'm going to do scenery. Now, scenery, I will do things like Arizona. I will do California. I will break it down by country, by state. Usually not by city unless, like, there are a whole bunch of add-ons for the same city. Maybe some terrain fixes and things like that. I might do it like that. But usually I just do uh, country and state or region or you know, whatever you want to call it. I know it changes based on where you are. And the last one I'll be doing is things like tools or UI development. So a tool that I will consider would be like um, uh, Parallel 42's flow or the UI mod that removes the handlebar up at the top of the screen every time you move your mouse. Things like that. Okay, so now these, this is an aircraft, that's an aircraft, that's an aircraft. So I'm going to open these up, and all I want to make sure is that this is what shows. I don't want anything after that, right? So Kit Fox, Speedster, that's an aircraft. So I'm going to drop that in there. Drop that in there. Drop that in there. These are all aircraft. And pretty much most of what I'm going to do today is, is aircraft. Now you can see here it says add-ons refresh needed. Okay, so what we're going to do here is just click the little refresh cog, and now you can see my folders. And this is where add-ons linker gets really slick. Now, obviously, so from here, let's actually go back to this screen, the bottom one here. Oop, if I click on it correctly, that would help. Let's go to our downloads. And so like here's Tucson. Okay, my KTUS airport. By the way, I do recommend the free version. It is still the best by far. Again, making sure I have that. So I'm gonna go into my scenery folder up here. New folder, Arizona. Now there are multiple Tucson modifications. So I am going to actually do Tucson in this particular scenario and then drag the airport up. This is just the airport right now. Okay. And then there was another one in here. And then the other thing that I do, by the way, as we're getting into this is once I'm done with something, I delete it. And it's just to, so I have a mental note of what has been completed. Uh, let's see here. Action. I think that was done as well. Hang on a second. Oh, there, there we go. Like this one is static aircraft from FSLTL for KTUS. So I'm going to do the same thing. It's a WinRAR, which is why it looks different, but 7-Zip will open it. That's why I recommend 7-Zip. It is truly the best. So I'm going to throw that up there. Okay, all under Tucson. And delete those two now. And now we can start, <clears throat> excuse me, now we can start talking about some of the other stuff like the aircraft that have auto installs. So let's run through the turbo arrow here from uh, Just Flight. Actually, let's get my TBM 850 in there. Just waiting for the installer to launch. And I'm sure it's gonna pop up on the wrong screen just to annoy me, which is totally my fault because it's based on the Windows configuration at the moment. So it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Yep, it did. All right, so let's bring this over here. Here we go. All right, obviously I need to fill in my email and password, guys, so give me a second. I'm gonna do that off screen. It's activating. Okay, so here we go. Now we're gonna go next. And of course it can't just use the same window to make me happy, yes. All right, so it's in, it's doing the install right now. Usually with anything from Just Flight, a lot of stuff from Sim Market. Now Sim Market has, they have their third party application which allows you to actually change the directory that you want things to be installed. Those first four aircraft that you guys saw me copy into the aircraft folder, that's how those got there. Okay, was through the Sim Market app, it allows me to actually set the directory. But I don't believe Just Flight does that. So finish, there we go. All right, so now that we have the installation finished, let me show you guys how to move it. So all we're gonna do is go to Packages, and community and you can see there is the black square tbm 850 and guys this couldn't be any more simpler so all i'm gonna do is cut it however you want to do that click up on aircraft and paste it in there it's removed from the community folder and it will now be added right there 
to the add-ons directory. And you would do this with all of your installs. So I've got quite a few installs to go here. We still have the Turbo Arrow, the Hawk. I've got my PC-12. Still a bunch of stuff. Now, liveries. Let's talk about aircraft liveries. I do the same thing. It's the same principle. So I'm just going to come up here, make a new folder, and I keep everything separate. This is another one where because how often liveries can break, I do do, for example, this one will say TVM850. Okay, then I'll extract, 7-zip, there it is, open up, make sure I have all my contents, copy this in there, okay, and now the final step, just coming over here, we're going to refresh our add-ons linker, I'm going to go ahead and simply just check everything, and install everything that I want, or if you want, you can sequence yourself down to select specific add-ons. So for example, if I just wanted the airport and not the static aircraft, I would just select the airport and that's now installed and ready to go and I can launch the sim. And you can actually launch the sim and everything directly from add-ons linker. I usually don't. I usually just keep everything sort of separate. It's not like it's good or bad. There's no wrong or right reason there. It just, I think it's just habit how I've gotten used to doing it. But anyway, so I just wanted to show you guys a real quick, dirty way that I do this and uh, how much easier it makes things when you start it out right, right from the get-go. Because I know a lot of you have huge amounts of scenery and things like that. And then I've had it come up a lot. Well, what happens when it automatically installs it into the community folder? Well, as I just showed you here, you just go in and get it, drag it out of there, and put it into your add-ons directory. And then you have control of whether or not it's entered in. Anyways, folks, I hope you guys found this video useful. As always, stay safe and healthy, and I shall see you in the next one.